man go. <laughs> the place where they want me to bury the man, they don't bury so. Hey, hello guys, my name is Sheilo. I call myself the BCFR, that's the Black Comedian of the Federal Republic. And my name is MC Ajale, aka the Dancing MC. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, you're welcome to Pause Fun Facts. This okay, yes, so this is how we roll. This is how we roll, this is how we do it. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, all right, so, so I know that like, both this is small. Maybe this people don't come be like, say, they're going to say, this shit, you lost self. It's too ras. We are serious people. No, we are very serious, yeah, man. We don't joke people. about jokes, you know. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Even joking is a serious business. It's a serious business. <laughs> They can't call me a joker because I don't joke with her. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave me. All right, so I get like, um, I need to know, what was the career path that your parents, um, Chose for you and um, and why? Baba, this question is for Gen Z, for our generation. They know they're just born. Once you point career path, you become what you want to become. You know that kind that age now or that year, they will just give birth to you. And the hope is that um uh, the way they say it in the Yoruba. But then when I got to SS2, I decided I wanted to become the best accountant in Nigeria. Because in my class then I was the best student in accounting. So I wanted to become an accountant. So it was a personal um, decision, so I wouldn't say that was what my parents wanted me to be. But somehow, I know I'm a glorious child. But here we are today, not an accountant. The only thing I can account for is my balance when I finish events. <laughs> my brother, I don't joke with balance too. <laughs> <laughs> That's your middle name. She uh, balance. balance. No. <laughs> it's just that I don't expose that aspect. <laughs> so I'm going to ask She his first question. Are you ready to answer? Always ready. And this is going to be in no particular order, so I'll just pick it randomly. Um, Sheila, mm -hmm. tell me, what experience made you go into comedy? What experience made me go into comedy? You see this comedy thing, eh? You know, I always tell people for a fact that um, comedy chose me. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose comedy. Although, although I've always been funny, I've been this kind of um, very, I was this serious student, like very focused student from primary school. But somehow in between that seriousness, because I tend to read when other people are not reading. So when other people wants to be serious, that's when I play, you know? And so uh, I was in the boarding house from primary one. Yes, I was in the body house from primary one, and we used to do this program, this um, um, thing Saturday nights, mm -hmm. every last Saturday of the month that we call social gathering. That you know, year. that year for those, you know. And so I always come up and do uh, what we call fabuden. Ah, who the young? Fabu, you know those things. <laughs> and who actually made me love this? It was um, when I was in primary four. Mm -hmm. We had a student teacher. Okay. We call him. Double Akins. It was Mr. Akin, Akin Shola something. Oh, so we call him Double, Double Akins. He usually would tell us jokes, mm -hmm. some from uh, the late uh, Benga Adeboye. Right. So I picked up after him, you know, mm -hmm. and so I'll come up, I'll do those fabu. And then when I got to uh, Methodist Boys High School, um, I joined the Cultural and Dramatic Club. Wow, wow, you know Zulu. Uh -uh. <laughs> Oh, this one will be this one said I was still fun with the get uh, then okay. because I was in cultural and dramatic club, jet club, interact, you know. And so by the time I got to SS3, I founded the all second all um Lagos State All Secondary School Cultural and Dramatic we'll be Club. On behalf of the club. And I said allow me to talk this story finish. <laughs> this guy. Okay, so I remember that my first uh, vice, I was the chairman and then we had the vice chairman from Holy Child. Mm -hmm. Her name, her name, I wish I, I met that uh, lady again. Her name uh, is uh, Yemi Dacosta. 
And so from there, I picked interest. We used to go to different schools, you know, it's our dinner. We'll go to different schools, then I'll come up, I'll act drama, I'll crack jokes and do all those stuff. But it wasn't because I wanted to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. So uh, later, you know, we finished secondary school, I did try, enter university, you know. I even remember that I got admission to study medicine, but then, unfortunately, there was no financial, uh, finance of money to actually pursue that. But now you can be many thing. doctors. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I'm a comedian, and they say laughter is the best medicine. Right. I've, I've hit more people than some doctors will ever do. You know, so uh, one night I went to, I, I used to have a, in 2003, I'll go from the house, you know, really, mm -hmm. I'll tread to the National Art Theater to go find a role for movies. Then. For this the National Art Theater, oh, that time, yeah. At his village, we will sit down. Would they see there's some local? Oh, them man! Uh, all those men, them they go day. Some of all these, ah, would they see them? Some people go they do the hazard, them go day. You know, the people yeah. call you say, "Come go buy us drink." You wrong. Go go buy drink and all those stuff. And then there is this place is really they call Winnie's. I think it's a hotel. Winnie's hotel. Yes. Yeah, somewhere yes. around the Jesha yes, area. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll go there too. I was looking for a role, and that, that was where I met one comedian. One guy who later became a comedian, MC Danfo. Danfo. Yes. Danfo don't take for this. Danfo, me with Danfo, they work at that time. We don't really know each other. Mm. Or, man, we go jam. We we'll call the gist. Mm. You know, eventually, uh, Danfo got a role to play gate man in one movie. But I didn't get a role. This was from 2000. Is it a play gate man for us? This was from 2003. So what I usually would do in those years, mm. I did dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they always dance Marcos at that time. You know, this uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hey, more if you continue, see, more continue. oh God, this will go shock today. <laughs> so, but in 2005, after doing the dancing, trying to get in a movie, one night I finished from my business center where I do phone call business at a relay bus stop, and I went home. I got home that night, and um, we saw this movie about Snow White and the mirror, uh, the magic mirror on the wall. So when we finished, I, I cracked a joke to my brothers, my cousins. Then I say, Ah, say man, I remember when they come premiere this movie for Nigeria, and then they put the mirror on the wall. They told us to be on the queue. And then we walk to the front of the mirror. You say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the magic mirror on the wall? Who is the fairest of them? And the mirror will tell you your position in the world. And you know, ah, I said President Bush. John Bush then went, stood in front of the mirror. He said, mirror, mirror, who is the fairest? The mirror told him you are the tenth fairest person in the world. I, I, everybody was going. Then our president, President Olusha Gombasanjo, stood in front of the mirror and said, magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them? And the mirror said, you are number two in the world. I said, eh? If a passenger is number two in the world, then I'm number one. <laughs> I don't know what is, why I'm on the queue with all these people. So I left the queue. I said, people should just flex. So when people had gone, it got to my turn. I went to the front of the mirror. I said, magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them? And the mirror said, ah, ah. Let it call fair people. You to you come. That's not fair. <laughs> this is not being fair to me. I'm not the one among the fair. Yeah, <laughs> Your name not even in my list. You know, so I cracked that joke, and then my cousin was like, ah. You know, say this is where they do. People they use that and they make money. Huh? Right. See, eh? no worry. This was August. He said, we have a show, a performance at a church next Sunday. Mm -hmm. You are going to follow us. When they call us on stage, go on stage, crack one or two jokes, then reintroduce us. Mm -hmm. And that was what happened. They introduced them. I went on stage, cracked the jokes. I came down and, I, you know, I introduced them. They went on stage. As soon as I came down, one lady came to me. He said, we are doing something in our church. We'd like you to come and perform. That was how the, that was how comedy career started. Whoa. And it has not stopped since 2015. Hallelujah. Being in the entertainment business now, next year is going to be 20 years as an entertainer. 20 years. And 18 years as a stand-up. Whatever you are, please give Sheila a round of applause. Wait till you do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so give me a standing ovation. So, uh, no, no, wait. Let yeah. me ask you the question. Since you decide to pick randomly, me too, I'll show you today. <laughs> Let's start from the top. <laughs> no, we we'll started from you the top. You didn't tell us the role you play later, like the role play. Okay, continue. No, but you know that that 2003 that I didn't get to play feature in any movie and I was going to the National Art Theater. Mm -hmm. Do you know that I've featured in over 10 award-winning movies now? <laughs> Big Boy, 
even if now I can pass, I'm always in one role or the other. And my 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 part in those acting to be short, but they make impact. Have you seen Blood Sitter? Of course, of you course. You see, you see when I play the police. Are you telling me you are reminding me? I'm just letting you know again <laughs> that I played the role of a police officer. And when I walked inside, I was the one that told the uh, 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 slow Joe that uh, remember the elephant. Mm. Uh, mm. Remember the mm. elephant, slow and steady. Unless they, they pay you money, uh, police here will they take and slap. <laughs> In case people for house don't remember, now maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> the only one sick we know. <laughs> so let me have my question. Let me have okay, question. so I get it. We are at the peak and randomly. Where is the one place in the world you would like to host an event? <sighs> Pause one, I'll be like this now. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That I would like to host an event. Um, I, I hosted an event in America. I've done in Dublin, um, of course, uh, on your platform. Um, <clears throat> let me say Canada. Canada. Yes. Ah, so you asked me that question. Eh? I also never asked me that question because even me. Eh? Yes, I've been I've been in the UK doing tours of different cities in the UK. Mm -hmm. I've been at the O2, but then it's the Indigo O2. Oh, okay. You know, I perform there, but I'm looking forward to the performing at the O2 Arena. The the O2 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 as that time, by the time I perform at that O2 Arena, 20,000 capacity, and I come on stage, I crack joke, people laugh. That time, my name changed from BCFR to COW. What Cow. does that mean? Comedian of the world. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so if I call you cow outside, now nah, no vessel. Even cows are very valuable in Nigeria. So <laughs> the president is in support of me. You, you, I remember you talking about the movies you featured in. So tell me, Shayla. What is the most tasking movie role you've taken on? Mm. Don't we have pass? The most, ah. Mm. Apart from the blue, I mean the movies. Yeah, so there are some movies we do behind the blue background. Yes. And yeah. they are called mm. blue film. Uh, mm. Film is film. Mm. Mm. It's, it's a film industry, so. Uh, so. <laughs> I think the most, um, ah, which one? I, I think when I played um, the role of uh, the best friend of uh, an aspiring presidential candidate mm. uh, in uh, Your Excellency, I played Fred Asemota in that role. I think it was very challenging mm. uh, because I was acting with veterans. Okay. Ah! You want to mention like two? No, 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 you know, Oga Aki Lewis. Oh, one of my favorites. Uh, when, when we played that role, as at the time we played that, uh, we shot that movie, he had done about 43 years in the industry. <laughs> and so it was challenging because this is a man that by the time he looks through the script, he don't already get the script for a head. So once he come, he does the deliver. Back to and back. it helped me to also build myself because with that, by the time we shot two rows, um, two scenes together, I picked up two. Once I looked at my screen, I, I picked up. It was easy to shoot, yet challenging because and they put everything for head. We just come, we just deliver. Mm. You know, you know the way movie be now. Huh? You don't full page. Pa, 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 pa. You don't put on for head. You will come. No, Oga Akilu is too much. And Funke Akindele also directed that movie. You can imagine directing and also being in the scene with you is it's actually very challenging. But I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your weirdest experience with a fan? Ah. Uh. <sighs> This is a personal question, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is when they want to know. Have you done the do? Eh? Have, you, have you gone? Has any fan gone down? They've gone down me before they prostrated. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think um, that was in 2016. Hmm. Yes, 2016. I was on the stage. Ah, I've dropped my, because the audience, you know, it's not every time as comedians that we face um, a lively audience, right? Yeah. 
So I was on the stage, I dropped my first joke, you know, out of overconfidence, hey, I go catch you now. now. <laughs> I dropped my first joke. I was expecting it to, you know, to get to that level that we all expected, you know, but it didn't get to that level. The second one, I dropped it, they laughed. The third one, you know, the way we freestyle and all that, just for me to get into my last joke to sign out. Um, uh, I was already thinking that this is my last joke, now to finish them, yeah. sign out. I was, and it was a build up joke. They don't they laugh, they come. They don't they laugh, they come. They don't they laugh, they come. As I was about to drop the punchline, one of my fans just woke up to me. Ajele, please, please send me an announce, send me an announce. Say, one card, the block. <laughs> Which card he blocked? I didn't want to answer her. What sort but of she block dragged my leg. <laughs> block us. Uh, what sort of block? Oh no. It was hard for me to get back into the performance, and that was how I walked out of the stage. Hi! All right, people, you're on stage. Shay Lord, this question is for you. I'm still picking randomly. Um, tell me, this one is simple. What was your first job? Not the one you blew. I mean, for your first job, and what was the pay? Ah, I don't, I don't even blow jobs. I'm sorry, I don't do blow jobs. Um, um, oh, no. This guy is confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> my first... My first job. But, but you, don't first blow, job. you don't blow through this job now. You don't blow through uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, this job that you do. It's just that I don't blow the one that is very crazy. <laughs> So, it's my favorite restaurant. Right, let's go. Blow blow. That's what we call it. Blow blow. Blow blow boss. They come. I know that they come and play. Okay, my first job. I think I finished secondary school and um, I decided to go and teach at a lesson. Mm. You know. Oh, and Does that, did that lessen your career? I mean. No. Okay. So it was actually <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> okay. So I decided to go and teach at a lesson. It was in Benin. Mm. I've gone to stay with my sister in Benin. Right. You know, I went to this lesson and uh, I told them I wanted to to teach uh, one of their classes. Okay. And they were like, "When did you finish school?" I said, "I just finished secondary school." And the man, the owner of the lesson was like, you just finished secondary school and you want to come and teach secondary school students. <laughs> and I said, yes, that, I, that I could teach, you know, because I was that confident in myself. I knew I could teach them. And then it's, okay, let's go to the SS1 class. What subject can you teach? I said, I can take them maths, English, physics, chemistry, biology, any of those five subjects. And he said, okay, that I should take introduction to chemistry. I went to biology, and I remember I started with the definition of biology. Can and, you still remember uh, the definition? Ah, huh? uh, uh, biology is the uh, scientific study of uh, living organisms. You know, Mama, money is all I know. I don't want to know anything. No, I still, I still remember. I still remember. And you know, I, I remember I went on the board, and I was teaching them biology, introduction to biology, and then we talked about living organisms and the characteristics of the living organisms. And you know, I wrote everything on the board, Mr. Nigadi, the number uh, one. Yes. You know, movement, respiration, nutrition, irritability, I wrote the description, G -G -G for me. reproduction, and death. Yeah. <laughs> I know. get them. <laughs> and I remember I wrote that on the board. After I wrote it on the board, I taught them, you know, and then I started asking, I asked the question, which of the following is not a living organism? The reason why this man gave me the job, and I put A, Emu, you know, and I put Sparogira, I put Amoeba, and then I put, um, uh, um, uh, fire, yes, you know, and, and everybody, everybody started shouting fire, fire. They were like, fire is the non-living is, uh, is is the one that is not a living organism. And I told them that fire is a living organism. You did? Yeah, I told them fire fire is a living organism. And I said movement, that fire can move from one place to the other. Mm. Respiration, that fire needs oxygen to keep burning. Nutrition, fire feeds on fuel and other uh, papers and other stuff. I said grow irritability. If you light a candle, you try to slap it, it will move, you know, it responds to stimulus, you know. And I said growth, a small fire can grow to become a big one. 
excretion, fire leaves, ashes, and suits on the floor, and all those stuff. And I said, reproduction for fire, you can get more fire, mm. and that fire can eventually die. And you know, everybody then decided that they were going to go for emu. You know, I had to now tell them that emu was a kind of bird and sparagera, you know, is a living cell and, um, you know, <laughs> and, <whatever. laughs> and eventually I told them that fire was that, that is not a living organism, you know, fire is not a living organism. Although it seems to look as if it performs those characteristics of living organisms, but then it doesn't have the organs or cells to carry out those functions. Iwe, 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 and that was how I got Iwe. the job. Ask me how much was the pay? Um, let's say like 15,000 around back in the day. Monthly? Nah. 1,000 naira. Uh, it's not bad now, daily. <laughs> 1,000 naira monthly. Wait. In 1991, Nadu. <laughs> ah! If I thought that I suffered, you wouldn't get past party people. Suffered. <laughs> it has particles in it, suffered. 1,000 monthly. Oh. Now they do interview for you. Ah, they tell you. I did tell you, but then that time the money be like uh, Koreba. Uh, may not be like semester, but I don't know biology. At least I still know the definition of enzyme. Enzyme is a, an organic catalyst which speeds the rate of chemical reaction in the body. Speed or slow down? <laughs> that speed, that speed. Go and check it. Go and check it. S speed or slow down? Speed. No, they it like this now. It speeds something. It speeds the rate of chemical reaction in the body. Uh, I told you, I, of course. I was a very good accountant. I ain't got nothing to do with science, you know. So let me let me ask, what inspired you to go into entertainment? What inspired me to go into entertainment is very simple. My father um, naturally was a comedian, mm -hmm. and you always come out or come up with um, magic. These days, now, me can't, now, me can't be the magic now until they cheat all the children. <laughs> so he has always been an entertainer, tried to entertain his children and all. And I remember going to my state, Ondo State, um, in 2001 or 2002, thereabouts. And during holidays then, when we were in holidays in secondary school then, um, <laughs> oh Lord, my uncle would sew a masquerade cloth for me. And I was a worker in church. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Gungu, wherever you are, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Your uncle is a money making. <laughs> If because that will not work, then <laughs> you collect we're, it for the gods. We were both workers in Redeem then. But during holidays, because he didn't want me to be idle, right? He would sew masquerade cloth for me and we'll dance all around the village to collect money. Sometimes we we'll threaten them. For me, Lobo. be careful. Nah, express you they go. And I remember then I used to do all kinds of crazy things. Dance, stupid things, you know. So when I came back to Lagos, um, and I joined Kai, Kick Against Indiscipline. And that was when I, I really I, forget to oh, you be kind remember that year. Um, I, you be one of those people when they destroy the show. Uh, okay, <laughs> I just uh, got uh, they destroy chaos. It's not funny. It's funny, Adele. It's not funny. I remember the first time I saw Adele in the sky uniform. Come on, please. It's talking Lemon about. And it's, 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 it's getting personal. It's getting personal. Please, can you please cut and please? <laughs> I feel like this way when they do come at me with this. <laughs> they follow people, they drag their chaos with them. Mama, can you see my eyes, please? Just <laughs> continue, continue. <laughs> Kai. <clears throat> Kai. Java, <laughs> Java, I don't see Kai. <laughs> then the train will start to. No, no, I don't want. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. This page does not support our <laughs> Please, <laughs> disclaimer, this place does not support violence. So, um, when I came back to Lagos, I started seeing Omo Baba, um, Ali Baba. Even before Omo Baba, I started seeing Ali Baba on um, um, Night of a Thousand Laugh. And I used to buy the CD then just to watch, even as a, um, a young school leaver then. And those videos inspired me that, come on, someday or one day, I want to be like this people. So, I think um, those are the people then that inspired me on what I want to become. Until I now met 
Shayi Law. They make casting first, then before Shayi Law. Mm -hmm. And these two people, you know, helped me to shape what I wanted, to, what I plan to become, and um, here we are today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you were not an entertainer, what would you be? If, if I was not an entertainer, I probably would have been a medical doctor. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm very certain that I would have studied medicine. It's a weird response. Uh, and uh, and somehow, some somehow along the line, I probably would have um, also been teaching. I love teaching. I love to pass on knowledge. And I think I do that on a regular basis, even as a comedian. Uh, that's now, the easiest thing for you to do. I can confirm that. Yeah, because I, I remember even as a comedian, I get to events, I see young comedians, I'm already gathering them and I'm telling them some of the things that I've learned from my journey in the business and how they can improve on their crafts and those stuff. I always do that. So I would have taught and also probably, I think I'll still teach though. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to. Maybe, maybe, okay, I think I do a little bit of um, motivational speaking. You do that a lot, even yeah, online. Yeah, and you know, I facilitate events, uh, you know, and I've been called for speaking engagements too, aside from comedy, where I taught people on different things and other stuff. So basically, I, I love that. I love that aspect. But medicine is still on my mind now. Mm. Um, I, I, I remember I still told somebody probably when I decided to retire from comedy at 50, I can still go and study medicine. I just, I just, I just love no, it. Now, so I never about talk for last 50. <laughs> 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 What is your favorite experience working abroad and why? Ah, it is quite different. Oh my, whoever wrote this question, whatever you are, God bless you. My sister, my brother, the Lord is your strength. What you say? You will ask him. Say, God bless the answer. I ask her. That's <laughs> a question. Um, the platform here is different from there. I remember the first wedding I anchored uh, at, uh, in Chicago um, 2016. I was just on the cake. You know how, as an MC or as a comedian, no, no, before the wedding, I was invited to a church and they asked me to conduct the cutting of the cake. And I held the microphone. People were still expecting the next thing for me to say, you know, or the first thing for me to say. And as a comedian, you have different thoughts going on in your head on where exactly you want to catch them, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just playing and I'm, and I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful cake. I anchored an event in Lagos, as the couple were about to cut the cake, someone shouted, more could not cut them, not rent, rent them. That was supposed to be a one-liner joke for me to set the pace or the tone of my performance. Mm. Did you know that the laughter lasted for about three minutes? Wow. The same and thing you will say it in Nigeria, Nigeria and nobody will even, nobody will even flinch. <laughs> Do you understand? They laugh over there, and that is because I, I really can't tell. Maybe it's the environment mm -hmm. and the way the reason is quite different from, you know, the way our people listen to jokes here, right? So it's quite different. We've, we've had a series of experiences in Dublin, in all parts of the country um, out there, mm -hmm. where we perform, and people after the event want to take pictures with us. Somehow, it is quite different from here. And that is why I decided to marry outside Nigeria as well. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think I think I think that thing is actually because um uh I think over there entertainment is seen as a part of life. Mm. You know, as a necessity. Mm. You understand? But in Nigeria, entertainment is an afterthought mm. of stress. Mm -hmm. mm. We don't do stress. I bet more don't go. Go laugh. Whether they will make us laugh. What is your recipe for cooking up a good joke? I know you're a very good cook when it comes to cooking food. Now we're talking about jokes. <laughs> jokes. What is the recipe for cooking up a, a good joke? Mm, like I always say, reality does not um, does not have limits mm. when it comes to jokes. If if it's an experience, mm. it makes it even much better. You know, for, for a comedian, you know, uh, somehow your experience is shared by other people too. Right, right. And so if you can build on, on that experience and create a joke from it, mm. you know, you, you, you're definitely going to get the right laughter. Mm. And sometimes we do comparison 
between people and you know countries environments generally comparison gender. gender comparison and all those stuff also works and so so many things uh and again mm, timing mm. timing is also very important to cook up a good joke and uh punch line mm. you understand punch line not everybody knows when the punch line should come in you know that's why uh, when you when you're a storyteller, you don't want to wait till you get to the end of the story before people laugh. laugh. You build some punchlines in between the jokes, gradually building up to the end bit. You know that evokes bigger laughter, and then spontaneity also works. Very, very spontaneity. Good. I tell you all the time. You're on stage and you're able to pick something that is happening from the audience and make a joke out of it. People tend to kind of want to celebrate that intelligence. That, ah, this thing, no, 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 no. See the way this IT thing come, you know? Spontaneity also works, which is good. Okay, who is your all-time favorite Nigerian comedian and why? E for a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, sincerely, um, Ah, you speak one. It doesn't my, matter. My all-time favorite comedian right now. Um, I will pick um, SLK. SLK, good. SLK because um, with his intelligence, you know, you may not know where he's driving you to. His what play? What is what play? So you could tell or you could <clears throat> feel that he has inspired me, even though he's my young colleague, he has inspired me to even think out of the box. I just talk rubbish and say things anyhow. Mm -hmm. So um, I have so many big names, even the one sitting close to me. I'm not trying to be sentimental. That's my boss. In fact, more than boss, it's my tipper, BRT. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, really, uh, uh, SLK is one of those Nigerian commanders that I, I actually love to. Mm -hmm. You know, I love his work play. Um, I love um, the way he drives his jokes. Right. You know, the build-ups to his jokes and then the punchline. These right. are very lovely things, you know. Right. Great. So tell me, who is your all-time favorite comedian? My, and mine, why? And why? My, mine is actually very simple, you know. Uh, when I started comedy, I didn't really know anybody in the comedy industry mm. as at the time that I started. You know, I think the only person that I knew as a comedian before I started was Ultimate Malam, who is later known as Mr. Patrick. And that was because he used to do this program on TV then with Mandy that they called DTD Jam Damn Show. Show. At the beach, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Mr. Patrick would always come on stage to perform and I always wanted to attend that show. That was, I was still in secondary school, show, I'm the, telling you. They showed on NTA, right? They yes, on NTA. NTA. So I always wanted to attend that show, but my brother would not allow me to go. If I probably had attended, at that time that I wanted to attend, I probably would have become a comedian way earlier than I did, you know? But then my brother would not allow me. So when I eventually got into the comedy industry, I started seeing different uniquenesses, mm. you know, meeting different people, you know, I love the fatherly figure that Ali brings to the industry, the branding that basketball brings to the industry, the spoken English by Basot Tarajina and uh, Teddy Babyface, comedy uh, Jedi. Mm. Uh, I love the event packaging ability of AY. Why? You know, I love Agodai's dexterity. Mm. I love, um, uh, Gandokis and his creed. did not power. allow me to express this part of me like this <laughs> man. No, no, no. This but, now. but my favorite all time comedian is actually Steve Harvey. Oh, I thought it's Nigeria. Oh, Lord. Oh, you said favorite Wait, Nigerian? Nigerian comedian. And oh. why? Oh, if it's Nigerian comedian, my favorite all time Nigerian comedian is Gandoki. Mm. And, that is, and that is because. I um, share in that too. Gandoki is probably the funniest Man in comedian in Nigeria. He is a comedian's comedian. Yes. Every comedian wants to listen Gandoki to him. Gandoki is that comedian that makes me laugh and my tummy aches, you know? And such people, when they make you laugh, you don't really hear this laughter, or this loud roar of laughter. But then you are chuckling in and, you know, your tummy is ache. Gandoki, Gandoki's special expression is crazy. You know? He got this joke where Gandoki they crack, crack, crack about madman, eh? 
I don't know if you remember that joke. Yeah, when Nandoki talk say if person owe you money, mm. say no just talk, just tell him if the person no agree pay you back, say no worry, just carry the person. Go say you want to go visit somebody for psychiatric hospital. He said, but you don't go early. I don't tell them say you they bring one madman come. We say the guy is stubborn. <laughs> say the guy is stubborn. So you don't pay for injections. Say not ten injection you pay for each injection are five hundred naira. Say as the guy don't reach, the guy follow you reach the psychiatric. You don't tell them say you don't bring the madman. You don't hold the guy. Say the guy will come say who be mad? Who they mad? Who they mad? Before the guy know what they happen, they just inject and. Uh, uh. <laughs> He said by the time the guy go wake up from a top bed, <laughs> where the jet up, he say as the guy wake up, he look the doctors and say, I know the man though, I don't know why they bring me call you. Hey, yeah. <laughs> he said by the guy, by the time the guy don't sleep like two days, when he wake up, he go walk on day friendly with the doctors. <laughs> say doctor, do you do you watch Arsenal match? Do you see the way Arsenal beat Liverpool yesterday? Say the guy go don't forget. Say now two weeks ago now Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the doctor, doctor, yeah, doctor, doctor. Say okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> this page does not support violence. <laughs> you know where I Gandoki with the and Gandoki actually is a is a Guinness um, world record holder. Mm. You know I don't know if Guinness eventually gave it to him. Gandoki performed for I think forty two hours non stop. And I remember during that performance, one time he was going to the toilet to go and pee, he heard the microphone and he was walking into the toilet and he was still cracking jokes. He got into the toilet as he was peeing, he was still cracking jokes. He didn't stop. As he pee, he began to use pee, take crack. Oh God. People were going home and coming back, you know, some yes, people left. Yes, I remember I you, went, you, you, I went, you went there as well. I went back home, mm -hmm. I came back, he was still performing. No, Gandoki is... And I think Gandoki is a kind of comedian that can crack any joke. He can make jokes out, out of, of anything. There are, some jokes, there are some jokes that I will create personally that I will be scared to drop them mm -hmm. because of my strength. But for Gandoki, give it to him. He will make something out of it. He's you legend. know, one of Gandoki's jokes, I remember another one eh? <laughs> that Gandoki said, eh? <laughs> say one woman go give testimony for church. Mm -hmm. Say, hmm. Thank Holy Spirit, oh, if not the Holy Spirit, will wake me up. Hmm. Rats, they disturb us for our house now. Nah, carry, now nah, buy rat poison. <laughs> See, I go use and take it, they rat them. I can't forget them for kitchen. Now, Holy Spirit, don't wake me up. <laughs> Say, make I go inside kitchen, man, go check what they have once I reach inside kitchen. Now, nah, I see rats. <laughs> Open my pot of soup. <laughs> See a poison they pour on me side. So as I see the rat, when I shout, then the rat say, since why they live for this house with you, I kill you. I say, what poison me? I will poison you. Oh, thank God for the Holy Spirit will wake me up. You know, that dog is, is, ah, no, 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 no. From abstract to everyday normal living, anything comedy, Gandoki, Gandoki from head to toe, it's comedy. Pause, please. Let's pause. <laughs> it's a pause for fact. So I said, what is your most embarrassing memory as an entertainer? Hey, father. OK, I remember then that um, there's this church in my area. They wanted to do um, a concert. They call it Lafita. And the name of the church is called Trem. And I was invited to perform. I did audition to perform. Um, Wan Lily was the MC. Oh. Uh, Wan Lily came with Bucci. Oh, wow. Yeah, great guys. So it rained that night, and I didn't have a car. I walked inside the rain to the church. Oh. I had a great performance, and then as an upcoming, right, you want to give everything to impress. These days, you just relax and you allow yourself to flow. But then, you must impress either by dance, by comedy, by singing. You must be everything. Everything, everything you, know. you must be laugh. mad. You must, they must laugh. People gas laugh. <laughs> so, I was doing a joke about uh, someone that was running and all that. I can't remember the joke right now. So, I split to... 
I said, yeah. I think a person they call me. <laughs> I thought person was telling me that your time is up. <laughs> I come not to say AC for the church. Come, I, please work on the pass the departmental uh, ovoco the. I don't know the name they call it. Yeah, the center part. What's the name of the center part? You know, the, it's the Onovoko Evil. Evil. Uh, uh, I don't see the place called the Freeze. The. The. Um, mm. yeah, let me say. <laughs> <laughs> you know the name for? <laughs> I see quite an entire AC. My brother, I closed my leg for a trap. Now, when I walk on, go peace. <laughs> I can't hear my ears. Yes. I can't hear it below. <laughs> my my piece don't turn block. <laughs> Normally, you know when you have a, when you had a good performance, then you wait for people, your fans, to reach out to you to greet. I go also. <laughs> you must run. <laughs> oh God. You know that I get similar experience for this team. But that time I was still working at PZ as a, as a casual worker. And then you take a bus to Oshodi, you come down, and then you walk to Ilupidi where you have PZ uh, company then. And that day, I wore my trousers. I didn't know that while I was struggling to get in the bus, that a nail from the chair has stopped my trousers. The thing tear them. I don't know, say, I the work out and go office. Mm. People, they look in the waka past me, they will look me again. Nobody, they tell me, wait till they stop. <laughs> now, when I reach office gate, then they get one tell me, say, ah, but I wish I cloth you wear come off for us. <laughs> I say, wait till you do my cloth. He say, look, the, when I close you back, when I see the way the thing tear, and I say, ah! So people, when they see me, since they will come, they look, say, ah! Yeah. And maybe this thing just start to... And that's what my is. <laughs> what is your worst experience on stage? Your worst experience My, my stage. worst experience on stage... Um, what would be my worst experience on stage? Uh, I, I think I had about two incidences that I can remember clearly. Um, one was one time that uh, I went to meet uh, Jedi and Omo Baba at Yabatek, okay. you know, and I went to perform. And then there was this girl that was trying to heckle me from the audience, you know, she was trying to be a heckler. And then as she starts, you know, you second in uni now, you understand? No, no, no. Uh, no. As she starts, now nah, I knock her one hand. Her wife. She won't begin to do this thing. She won't talk again. I'll ah, not come another hand. Why? The t- you know, the one where she called the talk, don't call the enter, and my own call the enter. If I don't knock her, people go laugh. Everybody, you know, people are just laughing, having fun. She won't talk again. As she try to talk, I'll not come another one. The thing hit her. The thing hit her the girl, no PBR, and I she run, come stage. As she run, come stage, she call the pursue me for stage. I call the run with the run around stage like this. She pursue me with the run around stage. Next time, next thing, I show she hold my cloth. As she hold my cloth, so I won't run. I don't know, say she don't hold my cloth. I saw my shirt tear. As my shirt tear, now I have used and say, enter the girl again. Say, ah! You know, easy for children with their ball for face me and face you. And I saw you tell no, the person where my mother is there for comp and they clap and they say, woo! Oh no, you see, carry that behavior. Come school, oh boy, that girl won't die. This girl come out from the, you know, from the hall. You go call some boys, they go with me outside. You know, you know that that incident actually, you know, my cloth here, and you know, I had to just perform, give my last um, jokes uh, after that, and you know, I'm the singlet where I wear. Now let you not know, be singlet. Ah yeah. Uh, let. The thing we're supposed to sing inside. You know, let her. You don't let her go. <laughs> <laughs> the song not be on pause. <laughs> so the sing, no, the sing no even get audio. Now don't let. If you see the way singlet lights, you know those singlet will be like waiting that they fit out. So that was that was one experience, and I think the other one was when they paid me for an event. Uh, 
they asked me, they paid me for an event that they were having an end of year party. This was in 2007. Mm. And I thought it was just going to be the people that I would come. You know, the normal way they do end of year party is a show. You come, there is a stage, there is a band, you know. I didn't ask for the full details of the event. And then I got there, I saw that these people just had a table in a club. Really? I did tell you, they just get one table for a full club. Music, they go on, DJ, they play, people, they serve drink, people, they drink, they gist, people, they dance. And so they say, make a stand, begin to entertain them. How do I? Where Mike? Nothing. Hey, wait. I say, uh, make us laugh. Ah. <laughs> I say, make a try. Make no be like, I say, they pay me money. I go. I try the first joke, you know, enter. I try the second one, you know, enter. Now I look, say, oh boy, these people go for my hand. I tried this third one, you know, and I said, okay, let's continue with the program. And they say, man, sit down, say, then they bring food. And I tell them, say, I'm coming, I want to go and use the toilet. If you see wrong, if you see wrong, <laughs> I don't go back to collect my balance. If you see wrong. Mr. Shayilo, what three things do you hate most about startup comedy? What three things do I hate most no, about, about startup comedy? I believe comedy is encompassing, mm. you know, I believe comedy is interesting. Comedy comes with its financial gains. Uh, but um, I think um, the challenge of getting known, recognized, mm. you know, and people being able to match your joke with you is something. You know, now, 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 uh, um, I think uh, in Nigeria of today, Joke theft is something that I really don't, I really don't find funny, you know. Somebody will carry your joke, he go crack your joke with full confidence. They crack your joke where you did, and you know say, and you know say now nah, you get the joke. That's not wickedness. That's witchcraft. You know, and and they see the person they crack your joke for your present. They use that the tear. And people they celebrate and they don't know say you will sit down there so now nah, your jokes. That's like yeah. you you see your girlfriend cheating. That's heartbroken, you know. Mm -hmm. Bele, Bele. You know, uh, I, let, I let me help you. I, let I me, think we, we can do better in that regard. Let me help you to share the third one. One thing that I hate about stand-up comedy is the fact that um you can't repeat jokes. Right. Yeah. You can, right? You in can. different stages it's and all. Different stages, but, um, <clears throat> it's unlike music. You take it personal. personal when you... you know, sometimes you have heard the joke, but majority of the people in the hall might not have heard the joke. So just allow people also enjoy that jokes that you have heard. It's the same way somebody we don't sing songs in Stuta. All of us still dance Gongo, so we dance African African queen to today. There are also jokes that are evergreen, whether you like it or not. There are some jokes that I thought that I would hit. <laughs> you know, like Ukro Ukro Ukro, 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 right? You know, Legendary jokes. Uh, who I want to who join the choir. Mm, you know, mm. these are some of my jokes that are probably I can call classic jokes. Right. Police don't slap you before, so you don't slap you before. You know, different jokes like that. But people kind of because they've heard it before. Oh, for yeah, for uh, uh, some bit of before, before this one. You know. These are classic jokes. Other people have not heard it. They want to also enjoy it. Sometimes even people demand to hear those classics. Mm. You know, but then some people, ah, now only this joke you get. No. Sometimes you get into an audience, into the hall, and then you discover that this audience are very rowdy. If you try your new materials here, it might not work. So what you do is you fall back on the old materials that are tested and trusted. You understand? And then you can now build on spontaneity within that event. You know, Nigeria event, they did very rowdy. People don't even, they, people don't even understand, understand that. You go for a wedding, they are serving food. Somebody did, they, they say, hey! Uh, I, uh, you think I, they, they think I, I'm here before because of rice? Right? 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 Meanwhile, they're actually there because of the rice. <laughs> you know, say, I will never chop. Now, they say, I serve one dinner. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to be too and be like, take more. Take a sub more. Me when I take more. Me when I take more. If you go to your river party, noise go there. Once you don't go, you don't go Ibo, you don't MC Ibo wedding before. Ah, well, ah, well, ah. You don't MC Ibo wedding before. Right. They come. They'll come tell you where they MC to who they carry cola. Ah! And I got it. Emusi, Emusi. Eh, Bahia. Bahia. 
Oh, yeah, carry this uh, cola. Go and give uh, that uh, uh, yeah. Yoruba man, the son of the soil. Sorry. <laughs> eh? <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, MC. MC. Hi. Now, so one, one Igbo man will be MC for one of my events. Eh, MC. Uh, name microphone, let me coordinate the cutting of the cake. <laughs> and that is how you people behave. Yeah, I'm the, the father of uh, 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 I'm the chairman of this event. Uh, I've not said anything. I just uh, advise them. Won't I say something else? Uh, hey, yeah, give me microphone. Uh, we are going to cut this cake as we fell in, in Jesus. Somebody give me a J. J. Give me a M. E. Yeah. Give me a mu, a mu. Let me see. How do you spell Jesus again? <laughs> Bro, I, I did one actually, and as a couple were dancing, you know, all the children would come around to pack money. And I had the guy look at me and say, hey, we'll see these children, they are packing my money. I said, What is my business? If you want to chase them, you can talk to any of the ushers. <laughs> 20 minutes later, I called me again. He said, Hey, we we'll see. I said, Sir, he said, these children, they have picked 24,700. I'm counting it to say, No, be my work. You can call the bouncer. You thought I'd be coming, it was louder. Hey, Moussi, these children, they are picking your balance on us, so I'm near. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go pack my things myself. Uh, my most difficult event I've ever hosted abroad, um, two actually. Number one, my show. I was in the US for some months because of some things, and I decided that I didn't want the days that I used there to be um, useless. So I decided to come up with a show. Because I was making money here in Nigeria before I went to the US, and I was already making money in the US as well. I decided to have a show. But because I stayed there for a few months, right, find the people in the area or in that environment, they know me already. So I decided to have a free show. Unlike Nigeria, in the US, they don't go for free things. They like things that are valuable, mm -hmm. right? I organized the show, and the people didn't turn up the way expect. I expected it to be. Um, personally, I had fun, but that wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, Sonia Lee's um, 70th birthday, and his, you were there, sir. You were there. Just like our Yoruba people, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't pay much attention to what we were doing. By the end, thank God for Sheila. We had one eventually. Eventually, eventually, it was it was actually beautiful after afterwards, you know. Right. Yeah, I think I've had that experience too abroad. You know, sometimes the I think um, they want a little bit of scarcity. Right. You know. So so. Uh, and there are some jokes that you get away with here that you may not get away with over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want to be sensitive by you know mentioning the topics and all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that is it. So your last question, sir. What is the most memorable moment in your career? Bam. Ah, the most memorable moment in my career. Or was it when you carry her? I mean, your wife. <laughs> I've had several, several, several memorable moments in my career. Um, but I think one that really shaped my um, uh, understanding of the industry, uh, that made me understand that, yes, I think this has come to stay, was um, in 2000 and, uh, was it 2009? Mm -hmm. We had Night of a Thousand Labs. All right. And I had about two to three ovations in between my performances. Mm -hmm. uh, in between my performance during the first show. And, you know, uh, I remember coming backstage and Aguda is saying, Oh boy, this boy not here. I know what perform for this show. <laughs> you know? And I go die. When I heard that coming from a legend. A legend. Somebody that I've seen in the industry that, you know, that I respect so much in the industry. That kind of gave me this feeling of, man, if I go die, if he see your performance. And acknowledge it. And acknowledge that man, this guy don't tear. Baba. You are doing something right, you know? 
And that gave me so much confidence, so much courage to keep pushing. And for me, that defined, redefined my career mm. positively, mm -hmm. positively. And another aspect, another memorable moment was when I won the AYS Open My Comedy Competition. Ah, uh, Tiamu Savage. You know, <laughs> it was uh, at the vault. The vault. Ah, the event center. I mm. remember clearly. It was it was another memorable event because that day I, I met Basket Mouth and they promised to give me uh, I think he promised to give me twenty thousand naira, but eventually he gave me an event for seventy thousand. Mm. You know, mm, and several other people like that noticed me from that stage, and everything changed. You know, comedy comedy has been a blessing to me. It has. Is it the fact that I've been able to do a lot for people through this comedy business? You know, gotten married, have my kids, I traveled all over the world, and trust me. Oh, thanks for comedy. No regrets. The Bagram music should not be celebrate me now when I do a life. Oh, oh, oh. If I say the next thing I will go do now, now to enter music. You don't understand. Basket don't use that. They sing. They don't nominate them mm. for funny bone. Don't sing. Mm. Yes, now nah. you know they have. You know they have funny bone. Sing. God don't sing. I wait till they wait for now. Just too funny. Down, nah, nah. Kenny. Black. Everybody is sing. We too will sing. They even say make a write a chorus. <laughs> but my brother and I, they don't tell me say, can you write a chorus for a song? <laughs> my brother since two weeks now on a chorus are different. Now. If you see the way I define chorus, chorus. Now, now I know how music do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> my brother, they say, can you write? A, you say you want to sing. <laughs> oh, yeah, write chorus. <laughs> my brother, I call the thief. Wait till I go tell them. I say, sure, boy. <laughs> All right, guys, my name is Shea Ilov. This is FR, the Black Comedian of the Federal Republic. And my name is MC Ajele, the comedy dancing MC. And it's been an interesting time with us on Post Fun Fast. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>